Hello, and welcome to Region Locked. The survival horror genre was popularized in the West after Capcom's release of Resident Evil. The first entry in the Resident Evil series was directed by Tokuro Fujiwara, a developer who had been part of the games industry for a while before he developed the first entry in this recognized horror franchise. Fujiwara took a bulk of his inspiration from a Famicom title that used many mechanics now considered to be core elements of the survival horror genre. That game is Sweet Home. Released in 1989, Sweet Home was an RPG based on a Japanese horror film of the same name. Tokuro Fujiwara took on the role of the game's director, but was supervised by the director of the original movie, Kiyoshi Kurosawa. The game's story is essentially the same as the original film, following a film crew as they explore the abandoned home of the presumed dead painter Mamiya Ichiro. Ichiro was known to have hid several paintings within the mansion before he mysteriously disappeared 30 years ago. The documentary team of five attempt to seek out and recover these lost works from the crumbling mansion. Upon entering the mansion, the team are trapped inside by a ghost who threatens to kill them for trespassing. Now left with no other options, the crew must split up and work out a means of escape, all the while facing monsters and navigating the building's crumbling structure. The team discovered the ghost's identity to be Lady Mamiya, the late wife of painter Ichiro. It's revealed that 30 years ago, their two-year-old child had fallen into the house's incinerator and was burnt alive. In order to provide her dead son with playmates, she kills other children so that they may be with him in the afterlife. Only a short time later, she committed suicide and, with her ghost unable to forgive her, became trapped within the mansion. Movement and battles play out similar to most turn-based RPGs, but there are some differences that give the game a more survival horror feel. During fights, the team is able to attack to deal physical damage with their equipped weapon. They can also pray to power up attacks, and call teammates to join the fight and lend assistance. Items can also be utilized for various effects, and each unit is able to run. Each party member is considered an individual, and thus running during fights requires all members to escape. The option of running is dangerous, as it can result in the abandonment of a crew member, leaving them to deal with an enemy solo. Each of the five characters have a role within the group. Cameraman Taguchi is capable of revealing hidden images. Art restoration expert Asuka can use her vacuum to clear broken glass. The kind-hearted Akiko is able to heal her companions. Kazuo can make use of his lighter to burn away obstacles, while his daughter Emi is the master of unlocking. By talking with teammates, the player is able to recruit and form stronger groups, which makes both progression and dealing with enemy battles easier. Traveling alone is an incredibly dangerous option and will likely result in death. By using their tools throughout the mansion as a unit, the team must solve puzzles, defeat monsters, and attempt to get out alive. They're assisted by items spread throughout the mansion, which can be picked up and swapped amongst the party. These items don't just include objects that can be used to solve puzzles and overcome obstacles, but also weapons and armor which can improve character stats. These items can be swapped with other items anywhere in the mansion, and they will remain there until picked up again later. This is an important element to solving puzzles, as limited inventory space and how the player manages it comes into play. In order to solve some puzzles, the team must backtrack, assisted through the mansion's array of alternate doors that can be unlocked. Quick time events can occur too, requiring the player to make snap decisions under the stress of permadeath. Party members may be killed at any moment as the result of traps and dangerous obstacles, with no means of revival. The unique skills of each character can still be utilized, however, as items that pertain to their talents can be found near their corpses. Depending on the outcome of the team and which members of the crew survive, it's possible to see one of five different endings. Sweet Home was one of the first home console games that Tokuro Fujiwara had worked on. 
When speaking with Kiyoshi Kurosawa about the video game adaptation of his movie, he told not to worry if the game didn't follow the movie exactly. Fujiwara stated that he was able to use the film as a reference, and that with both the film and studio set at his disposal, he was able to use whatever elements he felt would work within the game. He was considerate of how to go about adapting the film into a game, adding extra elements to the story through diary entries from 50 years prior to the events of the game. Sweet Home's successor, Resident Evil, was originally conceived as a remake of this 8-bit title. Fujiwara initially invited Resident Evil's director, Shinji Mikami, onto the team with this goal in mind. Fujiwara believed that Mikami had a good understanding of what is frightening. Later recounting, Mikami hated it. This is how our conversation went. You hate being scared? Yep. So I figured we should do it. If he'd answered that he never got scared, I couldn't have trusted him with the project. People who aren't afraid of anything don't understand what's frightening. In my view, you can't make a horror game if you don't have any fear. Fujiwara was frustrated with his work on Sweet Home, mainly with the original Nintendo's graphical fidelity. When talking about Resident Evil's roots, Fujiwara stated, Once the PlayStation was released, conversation turned towards the idea of launching an original franchise. The basic premise was that I'd be able to do the things that I wasn't able to include in Sweet Home. It was mainly on the graphics front that my frustration had been building up. I was also confident that horror games could become a genre in themselves. The game's region-locked status is often cited online as being due to the high levels of gruesome imagery and strong adult themes, with Nintendo wanting to keep the family-friendly appearance of the NES. However, no official source ever stated this. It's quite likely that another reason for the game never leaving Japan was due to the game essentially being a movie tie-in. Not only due to the potential licensing issues, but because the movie version of Sweet Home is possibly even more obscure than the game. At the time of release, it's unlikely that an international publication for Sweet Home was ever considered. The game received a full English translation in the year 2000 by Gaijin Productions and Suicidal Translations. This translation is of a high quality and makes the game fully playable in English. That's all for today, but if you're interested in horror games, why not check out our video on Super Galdelic Hour, a game that will definitely strike the fear into the hearts of the strong. We'll be streaming some of Sweet Home on Wednesday the 23rd of August on the second Did You Know Gaming channel. Why not join us there and take a look at this gruesome little game? Aww.